Ladies and gentlemen, what a moment of excitement and inspiring of having such illustrious personalities on the dais of the dais. I'm really privileged to host the magnanimity in an effort to rediscover or design a different perspectives. And henceforth, you have a business roundtable called Brainstorming Odisha Guru Story to understand the pulse of state economy and status quo. Or are you heading forward? Uh, therefore, you have a wonderful panel member here. So, I, I am sure Subhajit, you have introduced them. So, let me start with Sovik Biswal, the youngest MLA of Odisha, and I have been recognized as the ideal MLA of this year. Right, sir? So big, you are the youngest ML of Odisha, and you are you, you seem very engaging in your constituency. So, and uh, there is there is a buzz now. Odisha is picking in every sector. So, once a uh, constituency prosperous, the state will prosper. Hence, for nation will prosper. So, what kind of activity you take up so that you can the way of message picking your constituency will prosperous and pick up. Thank you. First of all. Today is an auspicious day for Odisha. We are celebrating 107th birth anniversary of the Iron Man, the Tall Man, the ex-Chief Minister, the Statesman, late Biju Patnaik. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all the eminent personalities on the dais, off the dais. Now I come to a question. Of course, if my constituency will develop, the state will develop, Accordingly, the nation will develop. If I'll say about my constituency, first I'll start with industrial growth. My constituency have a very advantageous location for industry, to set up our industry, like uh, river, road connectivity, railway connectivity, acres of land. So, the steps taken by our state government. I just want to tell you, in the year 2022, for setting up an industry, and for the new entrepreneurs, our government is giving subsidies, higher opportunities, and maximum level of employment generation. Basically, I just want to highlight, I'm just picking up one example. After 1999 cyclone, OTM was closed. That is in our constituency, Odisha Textile Mills. After appraising in the House of Assembly, our Honorable Chief Minister Sri Navin Patnaik have already sanctioned 150 crores rupees, which was the dues of the workers and the laborers of the OTM. And the land which was in the custody of Honorable High Court, now the land is taken up by our state government. It's a historic step taken by Honorable Chief Minister Sri Navin Patnaik. Thank you so much, uh, Sovik. Ma'am, you are a stalwart in the education field and you are the vice chancellor of Kit University. Ma'am, I am astonished the kind of uh, education imparting is a more, more than a world class university at Kit. But sadly, Odisha government is floating number of universities, I suppose if I am right, close to 40 universities one after another. So rather than focusing on quality education, we are focusing on numbers. So, how do you respond to that? Thank you. I think Odisha had started its growth journey from education itself. I remember that while people started discussing about the state of Odisha in uh, the beginning of 2000 or at the end of uh, the 28th century, people were discussing about Odisha, about Bhubaneswar, that Bhubaneswar is the capital city for education and Odisha is a state which, which was known for education and slowly I think the visionary leadership of the state from education we took up the issues like sports, the 
leadership of the state took up the issues like transportation, building the infrastructure. Then slowly towards, uh, I can say that after 2015 or in last decade, the talk of manpower in the state and the rapid industrialization or growth of startups in the state. Whether we should go for number in education or we should go for the quality in education. If we keenly observe the growth of education in this country, it has grown in both the way. We have grown in number. Today this country is having around 1,000 universities. And quality education, mostly we are focusing on multidisciplinary institutions, the institutions, the universities. We can bring the all the sectors of knowledge into the purview of the university where the students will come and they will be getting exposure to all the sectors and they will be having a holistic development. One thing I remember while I was going through the literature of Vivekanand, while he was talking about growth, he, was, he spoke that the growth is about assimilation of spirits of others, preserving our own individualistic and after that leave it with the law of growth. Then that's the real nature of growth that will happen at anywhere in this world. So if we take, uh, take up that as the growth, I think for this state or for this country, while we are aiming to educate around 50% population of this country by 20, 30, uh, 2035, and till now we have reached only at 27%, I think in that case the massification of education, the inclusive, bringing inclusivity into the education, and bringing quality, the, everything should come together, the growth in number and growth in quality both is required for the state. Bal Sharma. Satija Sahib, you are a mining stalwart, everybody knows, and you are running, you are the chairman of PIKI. You have been here first years together, so what, how what extent Odisha is prosperous in all fronts you have been watching for years together? How do you respond? So if I have to narrate what Odisha is, I would like to quote famous couplet of Vaseem Barelvi, ki haadso ke jad mein hai to kya muskurana chhod dein aur jal jalo ke khauf se kya ghar banana chhod dein. So Odisha is one of the most vulnerable state in the country and has seen many cyclones, but that has not deterred the zeal or the determination of the people of Odisha. So that's, that's the basic point which I want to mention, that uh, uh, the zeal and the, uh, the courage to survive or pass those things are very prominent and that has propelled the, the state. There are three, four uh, further insights which I would like to mention. Uh, Kautilya has said in uh, Arth Sastra that Kast Pashan Dhatunam Kritva Bhaven Sevnam Shraddha Yartha Tasya Vishnu Prasad. Cast wood, Pashan stone, Dhatu metal, these are blessings of Lord Vishnu and these should be consumed with gratitude. And if you see in the context of Odisha, all these areas overlap. So, area rich in mineral are overlapping with area rich in forest cover area which is low in HDI, area which is having high water area. So, so far, government has done a very good job. Uh, the steel making which was 4 million ton in 1999 or 2000 has come to 33 and aspires to be 100 by 2030. Forest cover in last two years have also grown up by 537 square kilometer. And if you ask me what is the growth, so so far, we have been able to again follow the philosophy of uh, Sukhasya Mulam, Dharma, Dharmasya Mulam, uh, Artha, Arthasya Mulam, Rajya, Rajasya Mulam, Indrijya. So, we have been able to focus on the governance part of it, but when we are aspiring for 100 million ton of steel, we will be producing 116 million ton of uh, iron ore. And as on today, in country with 100 million ton of steel making, we are producing around 12 million ton of LD slag and less than 50% is consumed. 
so when we are aspiring for such a high growth how we are taking care of waste or the co products how we are taking care of the biodiversity or the forest cover with that scale has to be seen but there are su success stories also like netherland has a target of reducing the primary raw material consumption by 50% by 2030 and the country wants to be 100% waste free by 2050 odisha can also achieve that mr satija ji if if I, if may i add on the recent financial year 2324 honorable finance secretary sir presented a colossal 2.3 lakh crore of budget so on that front what do you say so fund fund is not an issue if you ask me from the mining perspective right before in yeah. annals of history yeah so right from campa fund if you say dmf more than 11000 crore is there so i again say that the four basic principles like what we say in earth shastra that palan vriddhi rakshan yogchhama so these four things have to be uh, taken care of and the shareholder interest the hand holding which have been done so far and it not only helped the investors it has helped the state also so if you see last year last to last year mining revenue right. was only 13000 crores so now it was uh, 49000 crores so it's almost like four times so money is not an issue uh, the expenditure uh, and taking all the stakeholders along that will be the key to success thank you dr omkar rai please have your mic sir you are a professional technocrat and you have given an impetus to st pi that recently you discharge and would have brought you back to a startup to strengthen ecosystem startup right so how do you see over the years odisha's progress in different fronts not just startup odisha thank you I extend my gratitude for uh, affording an opportunity to me in this state business leadership award and summit 2023 i must say that uh, odisha's uh, you know quest to bring uh, itself on the national canvas has been a story of last uh, one and a half decades and you will find that uh, odisha has been able to transcend and transform itself uh, in various sectors uh, of its activities of its economy its uh, industrial sector and therefore it has created several, several success stories over a period of time if you have seen that industrial revolution that has taken shape in the state with 46% of contribution in gdp you will find that uh, downstreaming of the industry has been in question and therefore of late the government has taken several initiative to create the downstreaming add lot of value create more job and bring lot of value and wealth for the state the creation of startup odisha is one such initiative to capitalize on the kind of uh, industrial infrastructure we have the kind of intellectual uh, force we have the kind of talent we have within is the the kind of educational infrastructure as professor sasmita was saying the kind of educational infrastructure that we have within space and therefore the startup odisha is capitalizing all all the infrastructure that we have around and is building its success story on this very foundation and therefore very quickly if you look at the kind of achievement that the state has achieved we have been recognized top performer time and again by the government of india we have uh, so far registered 15 and more than 1500 startups in various domain in all emerging technologies and most of them are working in agriculture and allied sector healthcare biotech and such others apart from it and emerging technology and that can be seen as, as because the kind of engineered growth that it is as achieved by mapping the sectors where we have lot of strength and then creating startup activities in the sector so that the wealth and value can flow the, within the state and this is the kind of story which is ongoing Mr Goswami ji sir you are traveling all across the state of Odisha you have planned it uh, that uh, Angul and Sambalpur so how do you preview and uh, how do you see Odisha is rising what it was not yesterday thank you uh, devajit 
uh, and I am very very thankful to Interview Times for really giving me this opportunity to be here because today it's a definitely a great day. None other than late our Sri uh, Honorable Biju Patnaik ji's anniversary. The most important thing is that I feel that first of all very very Jai Jagannath and good evening to all the Thank panelists and the families sitting out here. See, before I come to your question, I think the most important thing, I'll just give you certain numbers, which really speaks for itself. See, when you talk about a, in a state undergoing dynamism and really coming out with a fantastic growth story, it is the youth and their dynamism really definitely will make a lot of mark in the society. Now, if you take it from that point of view, in the whole world, there are now only 16% of the population in youth. And when it comes to India, it is the age group of 27 and we have got 886 million people in youth. As compared to China's story, it is an average is 37. They are the most developing countries and Japan's is 48. Now you understand why am I giving these figures is that India is in a perfect position to really launch for the next decade or so. And when it comes to Odisha, I was just going through the figures, the youthful population is around 35% of the entire population. Now, I would like to sum it up like saying this, that today, for any state to really come about, what do you really exactly need? First is infrastructure. Now, you talk about infrastructure, the growth which is happening all over Odisha. Even the budget which has really come in this recently by Niranjan Puryadi ji, speaks volume of the infrastructure spending with the state is really doing. Other thing, the most important thing for with the infrastructure comes is skill empowerment. Now, skill empowerment, as uh, Madam was also saying, we are also trying to impart the skills in the people. See, it's important that the basic education is fine. But when it comes to really giving, whether it is an ITI or a diploma, the most important thing is making them aware of the fact that they can do anything in this uh, in this world without getting into say any company or on their own. So what I'm saying is that is one purpose for which this skill empowerment is really going at a very good pace in Odisha which I have seen. Now I have been a very strong proponent of this and wherever I have been going to XIMBs or IITs, everywhere I have been telling this that I am from an industry, NTPC industry. I have been telling that Please do come forward. You come to our place and see in actuality. See, engineering, we have also done it. But when you really come to our power station and really see what is exactly the thing for which you are studying, it will make a long impact on you. In fact, I have also come out with a suggestion that in ITIs, they can have a three months course in NTPC. They will get a certificate to that effect and which they can use it at any point of time in their career. Now, I am just telling you, this is the fourth thing. The fifth most important thing is the ecosystem. Right. Now, you talk about uh, I, startups which Dr. Rai was talking about. Fantastic. So many, I, in the paper today it has come in that there are nine startups with 1.49 crore the state has already given clearance for. So, I think in all in all if you see the figures, they already talk about that the systems are already in place. What you really need is the dynamism in the people. See, I have been in Urisa for the last 15 months. Right. So I am telling, telling, telling you, Devaji. And wherever I have been, well, like whether you talk about, I have been to the secretariat, I have been to all around. I have seen in the people, there is a quest for doing something for Urisa. Exactly. Which I have not right. seen it That's anywhere. True. That's true. And I have been there in 11, 12 states. Right. This is one state wherein I see this and I don't have a words for what people are really talking Excellent about. Excellent piece of words. Sir, you are a very, you are a country head, uh, JSPL, CSR. Sir, CSR is a very important component for existing industrial growth. But CSR has been a buzzword in the corporate world. Does it any affect to the ordinary citizen at the ground? That is, does it any impact to the ordinary citizen at the ground? I, I, I am no business with uh, CSR or anything else. But CSR has been a truly a buzzword, everybody crazy about the... They are doing a lot of, putting a lot of money on the uh, cops. 
I, I suppose two, three percent of profit. Has it been actually materializing on the ground? See, uh, this is something I will ask you, yes. and I will ask my the esteemed audience uh, who are here, who are uh, the on the dais and off the dais. That what's the role of the CSR? We should be first having that much of clarity with us. Odia re mu sabu bade kahe because. Right from Nabard to Prime Minister's office to, you know, to different industries. I always tell in one sentence: "Prakalpa sarakarankara bikalpa nuhe, prakalpa sarakarankara sahabhagi." We will be partnering with the government. We will be creating models for the government, and it has to be on a replicable cost. One town me 10 crore rupees invest karke. we don't want to create a soneka lanka and tell that this is called pr that is not csr so the impact which you are looking for that you have to see through the models that what kind of models this industry has created whether it is replicable or not if it doesn't have replicability if it doesn't have sustainability if it is not aligned to the un sustainable goal and it is not complying to the section 135 of the companies act it is not csr now coming to orissa See, getting the mineral-based industries, it is natural. See, I will be telling something candid, so I hope everybody will bear with me. Attracting mineral-based industries in Odisha, it is something which, if uh, today's day is to pay my tributes to Biju Patnaik ji, uh, looking at him, we all have grown up. You are quite young, but I have grown up in Katak, Katak city, you know, where. that was the place where uh, really biju patnaik was spreading those dreams in my university when there was lot of uh, cows there we lifted sri biju patnaik on our shoulder and got him to the campus splendid splendid okay so that is my association with sri biju patnaik ji and who himself is a icon of inspiration i can tell you if biju patnaik would have continued as chief minister for a longer period then odisha would have superseded maharashtra Tourist Odisha would have been somewhere else. Excellent. I can tell you this much. Maharashtra. I am giving an example because if Odisha is my Janma Bhumi, Maharashtra is my Karma Bhumi. Okay. I have on my own hand. I have made 162 water sets there. Yes, if you want, if you think that one water set is 5,000 catchment area, how much water set I have done? Excellent. Where farmer's income has become five times or ten times. You can go and see. I am not boasting it, and I have not done it. It is Nabard and Prime Minister's program. I am just a ayah. I am not the mother. I am the ayah in the system, the Wadi program, and all those things. If you look at Maharashtra and Odisha, you compare. Maharashtra is having six agroclimatic zones. Odisha is having ten to eleven agroclimatic zones. Maharashtra, on an average, is having ten to fifteen centimeter of topsoil. Odisha is having thirty centimeters of topsoil. Our Odisha is having 480 kilometers of coastal line. Our Odisha is having 32 percent of iron, 30 per to 4 percent of coal, 68 percent of bauxite, so 98 percent of chromite and what not and what not. Our plant, Jindal Steel and Power, was supplying day and night oxygen to the whole country, That's to the 17 states, compromising 25 percent of our steel and power production. 25 percent we are supplying. Phenomenal. That's and phenomenal. you have seen that 20 million mills we have sold. You have seen this Kisori Express model, which has succeeded in removing 2.80 girl, lakh girls out of anemia. Not only that, for the COVID-affected orphans children, we have constructed the children home. I am not talking of myself. There are so many industries who yeah, are doing yeah, doing yeah, it. Yeah. But the whole issue is this: what kind of water said, wadi program, whatever we have done, these are all models. The point is that. if an industry is intensively uh, investing on that and creating a model which is not replicable which is not driven by community ownership which is not really backed by grassroots level institution and which doesn't have a exit mechanism right. see when you are doing a model you have to have a exit mechanism otherwise dependent syndrome will increase okay so that is why you have to see the kind of models the industry has model matters created. sir model so matters the models exactly. the models is for the government government has to collaborate i will end up in saying that people are number one we all are right sided zeros maybe government is 10 with industry it is 100 with the banks it is 
ఒక యూనివర్సిటీ ఇట్ ఈస్ వన్ లాక్ లైక్ దాట్ ఇఫ్ పీపుల్ ఆర్ నాట్ విత్ యూ దెన్ వీ ఆల్ ఆర్ జీరోస్ సో యాజ్ లాంగ్ యాజ్ ద ఇండస్ట్రీస్ ఆర్ ఓన్ ఆఫ్ టు హ్యావ్ ద పీపుల్ విత్ దెమ్ అండ్ ద ప్రోగ్రామ్స్ అండర్ సిఎస్ఆర్ ఆర్ డ్రివెన్ బై ద పీపుల్ కమ్యూనిటీ అట్ ద ఫ్రంట్ then that's a very good model and it has to be sustainable well, another sir. thing well, i will sir. i will tell you that whenever investment comes there has to be people who are already enabled they will be growing richer it's a fact to hota spoke about uh, biju babu you know fifth march is a special to each one of us because it is not because somebody great taxi is holy bar the kind of energy thoughts and the kind of ideas he has infused in us is staggering and it is still reverberating in us right and i can tell you one word for the legendary he has created history he has made uh, scripted history changed history and shaped the history this is the legendary biju patnak and for that Naveen Pandak is now behind for the chief, your chief minister. So how do you soldier with Naveen Pandak, your chief minister, to make the, his dream become a statesman, next statesman of Odisha, Naveen Pandak? Our legendary lead, leader, late Biju Pandak, who started industrial revolution in our state. I'll say about my constituency, he started culling the tubes, OTM, and many other industries. And as a ideal son our honorable chief minister sri navin patnaik is carrying forward his legacy very nicely as a youngster i do believe i feel proud to be an odia i feel proud to live in odisha because in every nook and corner of odisha you can see the transformation we are in the verge of transformation health sector if we see sports if we see infrastructure in every sector we are touching the untouched heights if i'll say about sports the entire world recognized odisha for the men's world cup hockey in bisamuda stadium raurkula and kalinga stadium bhubaneswar from our state government for bsky biju swasthya kalyan yojana it's a remarkable yojana for the people of odisha schools of odisha we call it as the smart schools so in every sector if i'll uh, if i'll say each and every state then i think uh, uh, i need uh, one more day to complete that yeah whether it to resume it explosion many sectors are flourishing yeah exactly rising and uh, honorable chief minister very committed to make odisha the number one educational state across those nation so what are the boxes you have to tick this thing off so you all are discussing that uh, every side is growing in each and every sector and each and every domain starting from education health technology uh, mining we all are discussing then entrepreneurship so while the state is growing in each and every domain i think opportunities are also being created in each and every domain and while opportunities are being created then responsibility comes to the educational institution that how to groom the youth of this country as such as they can grab those opportunities while we say that our uh, opportunities are diverse perhaps it is the responsibility of the educational institution how to diversify their activities so for that uh, i see since last 5 uh, years lots of focus is there in all the higher education institution how to diversify their activities and how to bring diversified domain into the purview of the educational institution for that three four steps have been taken by most of the higher educational institution one is in the content level each one of the educational institution are trying to bring three aspect one is the global aspects or the global issues the research innovations whatever is happening in the global level we can talk about ai we can talk about machine learning or ar vr or we can talk about the uh, ai in manufacturing all those th- things are being coming to the content level from global issues then second is the national do- national issue. aspects that what are the issues of the nation and how this nation is preparing itself what is the focus of the nation in next 5 years or 10 years that is coming to the content 
that we mostly i am seeing that educational institution i can give the example of our institution we are trying to bring renewable energy we are trying to bring the aspects of agriculture we are trying to bring the aspect of indigenous technology into the content level third is the regional issues as we are discussing that the state is growing and opportunities are growing in the state so what are the avenues in the states are going if i take the example of the state of odisha mostly we are focusing on tribal issues tribal technology is the indigenous medicine so higher education institutions are trying to bring those issues into the aspect and we are seeing that in entrepreneurship the technological entrepreneurship is growing very fast we are hearing that the export in technology is being in many fold in every year so it is being a core in each and every domain it has come to social sciences it has come to of course in engineering it was there but at least in healthcare sector also the institutions are seeing that how healthcare practitioners can be uh, skilled with the it technology right. so in that way it is coming to the content level and in delivery level lots of focus is that how the students can be groomed that they will be open to the learning right, because right. when this education space is changing entrepreneurship space is changing it is being required in this time that how open the youth are to learn more uh, i can say the more smarter way or in the right. and their perseverance capabilities increasing so that is being in the focus so you are very much confident our second lead in education sector across the state Satija sir my final question to you line share of revenue comes from your mining sector still our mining sector but there is very low, less scope of of skilled employment especially in peripheral area where you belong to for you represent our my md so how do you upskill employment because you are sharing giving a lot of uh, revenue so you told that jump start by 40% like that so how do what is your strategy to upskill the um, uh, employment opportunity so uh, mining is going through a transition phase so when you have talked about uh, skilling uh, there are two parameters a boundary limit which i want to mention here one is the in existing mining industry how we can up skill and reskill the second is the just transition which is happening also so niti ayog report says that by 2035 the coal will peak and then it will start tapering and uh, if you see the flip side of is odisha industrialization while we have aluminum plants steel plants coal mines other mines and this is also going to increase there is also an opportunity or obligation on our side to work towards renewable energy and odisha geologically has greater advantage of pump storage plant good solar radiance and then how we can shift from Uh, the current minerals to the new age minerals as well as to the green jobs so your question on skilling has to be seen in it two context be because it's a major crisis yeah so one class is uh, in the existing mineral and metal business with as mine was mentioning more penetration of ai and machine learning that part has to continue and many mining companies has taken lead also like mechatronics is now uh, a, a branch and most of the people are getting a skill but at the same time how we are going to skill those people who are going to be in the green jobs or a youth who can have a dual vet which is prevalent in germany and uh, also a system of private uh, public partnership where some part of training infrastructure and learning can be given in the industry and the student is vocationally also trained and he has the ability to shift from one industry to other in case of just transition well said sir dr rai in the last financial year india uh, produce over 100 of unicorns i i am not sure odisha has yet clear the ground works how confident are you make sure startup will be uh, rebranding in this field a uh, very nice uh, basically suggestion uh, india has seen the creation of more than 100 unicorns in last one year it has uh, become lar world's third largest unicorn nation i must say that it has uh, been possible because a lot of digitization had taken place and we have lot of captive domestic market 
where these startups are thriving on. And most importantly, uh, as a whole, uh, this nation is attracting a lot of investments. If I talk about Odisha, of late, uh, Odisha is getting a lot of attention from the VC fund agencies, angel investors, and ecosystem players from all across the country. Because we have attained the critical mass. Our presence is being felt all across the country, and therefore, these attention is going to, to this focus is going to be paid on the investment ecosystem and our startups are going to be benefited. Most importantly, we have also launched our own Odisha Startup Growth Fund. And I must say that initially the government had committed only 100 crore. I expecting that we will uh, receive uh, close to 200 more crore from the angel investors, uh, SEBI registered AIF players. But I must uh, tell you that uh, we have received a huge response from the so, so you'll be state. thrilling in the eco startup system. Will be thrilling in the yeah, coming time. Yeah, of course. Time. No, no, yeah. no. So the you are very much sure for that. We are leading. In fact, okay. in certain sectors, we are making lot of name. So you are put. You are pinning lot of hopes on you. Yeah, as, of course. As heading startup ED executive yes, director. Oh, Swami ji. Uh, this is a very critical question I must ask you. India is going to the populous country on the planet. So you have to look beyond existence source of power transmission. So what kind of initiative are you taking for powering solar energy? Solar energy. First of all, let me tell you very frankly. See, every country definitely is powering on. The very reason is, the biggest example I will just talk about is Recently, you must know that for the one year, Russia and Ukrainian war was going on. Everybody talked about, before that there was a Geneva Convention, people said, RE is the only light of the day. We should really look for environment. But what happened exactly, with this war coming up, entire fundamental change, all European nations, including England, Germany and everybody, because they know that power was definitely, because Russian... Uh, oil was definitely not coming up to them and there was so much of heat coming in. All started coming out with their old power station and started generating from those power stations. So what happened to the Geneva Convention? What happened to those environmental convention? So what I am telling you, every piece of the cake is being drafted and changed as per the world fundamentals. We normally in India we have been talking and for the last, I think, six or eight months, the government is focusing. He said, Ari is fine. But our country also needs thermal units, thermal power to come by. Now, I am telling you, giving you a small example. The heat which is going to be there in the next two, three months, right. it is, will be tremendous. You do not know the power consumption going to go to such levels which has not unprecedented in the last few uh, decades. And accordingly, all the power stations have already been told that do not go for maintenance at all. We are trying to see that the coal is made available to us in order to generate the maximum. Also, in Odisha, if you remember, we have already got into a, this in the in a, um, Odisha conclave, we have already got a 3000 megawatt RE, we have already signed with Odisha government. And from that, in that 2000 megawatt, we are basically going in for reservoir blaze solar. So, to my question is that Devajit, yes, in Odisha it will be reservoir based solar. Solar will not be possible because of the land issues which the minister already told me very clearly. And we are also doing pump switching, pump uh, switching operations which will definitely yield another thousand megawatt. Already all these papers have been given to uh, the Gridco also because they are doing it on their behalf. And we are already in final stages of right. agreement, very yes. Yes. recently. So, my, my final question to before wind up the session, since you are running out of time. So, since you spoke about Biju Babu, you must be inspired by Biju Babu. He has a lot of uh, inquisitive style of doing businesses, you know that thing. So, since you are, in, you are all are in the honest mood, what are the biggest thing this government has to deliver so that Odisha is genuinely prosperous? I, I failed to get your question. My, my point is that what are the key elements 
ओडिशा हाज टू अप्लाय भेरी सुन सो दैट ओडिशा जेन्युअली प्रस्परस इन एन इन ऑल फ्रंट इट्स माई ड्रीम टू सी माइ स्टेट टू बिकम ए ग्लोबल लीडर बै इट सेल्फ बिकॉज इट हेज ऑल द पोटेन्शियलिटी आई हेव टोल्ड यू दैट इज नंबर वन नंबर टू इज दैट वी आर ओनली लुकिंग एट इंडस्ट्री वी आर लुकिंग एट रॉ मेटेरियल वी आर नॉट लुकिंग एट आवर एग्रीकल्चर वी हैव टू डीपली लुक एट आवर एग्रीकल्चर एंड वी हैव टू टेक एडवांटेज ऑफ द ट्रांसपेरेंट लीडरशिप ऑफ मिस्टर नवीन पटनायक एंड द पॉलिटिकल स्टेबिलिटी ही हैज गिवन टू दिस दिस स्टेट बिकॉज माय स्कूल डेज आई हैव बीन लिविंग इन द पॉलिटिकल अर्थक्वेक दैट मीन्स आफ्टर वन इयर देर इज ए चेंज ऑफ गवर्नमेंट आफ्टर टू इयर देर इज ए चेंज ऑफ गवर्नमेंट नाउ दिस टाइम हैज गॉन ओके सो वी हैव टू रियली बैंक अपन दिस पॉलिटिकल स्टेबिलिटी वी आर नाउ टू रियली वर्क ऑन एग्रीकल्चर एंड एग्रो प्रोसेसिंग बिकॉज व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इज दैट इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन वेन द कंट्री गॉट इंडिपेंडेंस देन सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द इनकम ऑफ द कंट्री वॉज कमिंग फ्रॉम एग्रीकल्चर एंड सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द पीपल वेर डिपेंडेंट ऑन इट now agriculture is contributing 18% 15 to 18% still 60% people are dependent on it that is why the inequity is coming on the people who are dependent on the secondary sector and on the primary sector be it be forest economy be it be agriculture economy now we are entering into industrial economy when the world has entered the digital economy we are to go to the digital economy that is why skill education is very very important and we have to shift the bulk of the people mainly the youth from agriculture to non agriculture to it so that the equity uh, will be prevailing third thing is that we have to really do value addition agriculture agro processing cold storage is the is the prominent need if ntpc is really giving us quality power then we have to harvest that quality power for for our perishable agriculture items so that farmers will be producing more apart from that what not a wonderful state it is as far as tourism is concerned what not we have we are having sea tourism we are having tribal tourism we are having temple tourism we are having cultural tourism we are having folk tourism what not tourism eco tourism what not tourism potential we are having but we should be able to get that much of foreign currency that would be a boon to the country because we need foreign currency for our biofuels and whatever it is we need foreign currency that is a big thing third thing is that what i want to tell odisha is blessed with 7 million sg 7 million girls this sag self help groups have to be self help entrepreneurs the sag has to be she because unless it is occupation based unless the sgs are driving one occupation and they are in, uh, generating an incremental income and they are justifying their opportunity cost of their investment they will not be sustainable and remember if the women is educated if the women is uh, dignified if we, if the women commands respect i am not i am not telling that you know i am giving respect i am telling if the women is commanding respect the not only two families but two states two countries and the entire universe will be will, will be benefited by that because they are the universe so we have to really work hard we are already mr navin patnaik ji sir has given us 7 million uh, uh, groups can you uh, can you just imagine the quantum as you 7 million people are now holding the banner of entrepreneurship the point is that how we all come together industry academia political leaders students youth leaders all have to come together and we have to convert this shgs into she so that they pursue their in income they generate a incremental income the next thing is that once they do the income they will save and today's saving is tomorrow's capital tomorrow's capital is day after uh, tomorrow's investment and day after tomorrow's investment is again give to income that is the cycle which cycle. i am talking about yeah, yeah. but women can change and we should odias can change because no other state in india i have worked in almost all the states in this country no where i have seen a potential state like odisha which has god given potential which has given people given potential and what a youth a tremendous kind of youth we are having who are skilled who are spontaneous and who are very very capable Thank to drive so odisha to the so global for your stage. precious words and pulse of wisdom uh, if i sum up you, all you panel members india is poised to be very severely very uh, prosperous provided some impetus to the as for skill development employment or other things so thank you gentlemen for your kind of presence here and precious time